Getting into Airsoft has never been easier than it is now. Back when I first started, buying your first gun usually meant meeting a stranger that you met off a forum, hoping the gun actually works, all while avoiding prying eyes because it basically looks like an arms deal. Nowadays, we have dedicated airsoft stores where you can walk in and get a feel for your first gun, dedicated airsoft fields where you don't have to worry about paintball covered walls, and of course, a wealth of different airsoft guns to pick from. At the same time, the amount of choices can be a bit intimidating and it's hard to know where to begin. I'm not here to tell you exactly which model to buy, but I will give you some examples as a starting point. This video is more focused on the questions you should be asking yourself when you're shopping for your first gun. Let's get started. To make an informed decision, you'll need to understand the different types of guns available. There's three main categories, electric, gas, and spring. First up is the automatic electric gun or the AEG, the most common type of airsoft gun you'll see on the market. These are battery powered using a motor to pull back a spring loaded piston, which then compresses air behind a BB, launching it down the barrel. The most reliable, versatile and upgradable, you really can't go wrong getting an AEG as your first gun. Electric pistols or AEPs do exist, but they tend to be rare, very low velocity, and because of that smaller size restriction, no company yet has been able to make one that's competitive with gas pistols. Which brings us to gas guns. As a rule of thumb, gas guns all require more maintenance than their electric counterparts, so for that reason alone, I don't really recommend them as a first gun, but I will explain the different types. Three main types of gas, green gas, CO2, and HPA. Green gas is probably the most common you'll see on the field, and it's the same gas as propane, except without the smell and with some oil built in. Most green gas guns can accept propane with an adapter, but you'll have to add in the oil yourself. CO2 is compressed carbon dioxide, often sold in 12 gram capsules, that's installed into the gun or the magazine, rather than being filled up like a butane lighter. CO2 is higher pressure than green gas, so the main advantage is a higher power and also a harder kick. But not only can they be too powerful for many fields, but the higher pressure does often lead to more broken parts. HPA, or high pressure air, is typically housed in an external tank with a hose leading up to your gun or your magazine. Typically, an HPA gun is a conversion to an existing green gas system, but recently drop-in conversion mech boxes to convert AEGs have become pretty popular. The advantage is the ability to dial in the exact pressure you need in a much larger gas reservoir. That being said, they tend to be a really expensive upfront cost, and it's not the most beginner-friendly. As far as gas pistols go, there's two main types, blowback and non-blowback. Blowback functions the most like a real gun, blowing back the slide with each shot, chambering each round, and also locking back on empty. Most pistols you'll see on the market are blowback. Non-blowback pistols are either a fixed slide or a revolver design. It's a simpler design, which not only means usually cheaper, but they're also quite reliable as well. The downside is they're much less realistic, they have a long and heavy trigger pull, and because none of the gas is used to blow back the slide, they're often way too powerful to use on most fields. If you can use one at your field, they do make quite a nice low cost backup, but in general they tend to fall under either toy grade or collector guns, and they're not really that competitive with green gas pistols. The one exception is the TM Mark 23, but that's neither low cost nor that beginner friendly. Gas rifles are often seen as some of the most fun you can have in airsoft, offering a nice kick and a very realistic function. You'll often see gas rifles used as movie props or even as training tools. Now the one downside is they're just not as reliable as AEGs. When one inevitably does break down, you'll have to source very specific parts, unlike the near universal internals of electric guns. Add in the fact that magazines are not only expensive, but they're much lower capacity, and in order to compete with an AEG requires two to three times the upfront cost. Finally, we have spring guns. The most common type you'll see is the bolt action sniper rifle. Sorry to say, just because you can pull off headshots and no scopes in a video game, doesn't mean you'll have a good time. The reality is a sniper rifle is only as effective as how well it's built and tuned, and that takes years of experience. Even if someone gave you their pre-built sniper rifle ready to go, you'll still be at a disadvantage to an AEG that can shoot 30 shots when you can fire off one. 
I'm not saying sniper rifles aren't effective and they're a lot of fun on the range, but avoid one as your first gun. So now that we understand the different types of guns, hopefully you'll believe me when I urge you to start with an AEG, at least for gaming use. If you're just going to be doing some plinking, a gas blowback pistol can be a little bit more fun to shoot on the range. And if it does break down, at least you didn't pay a field fee. Just make sure to check out our pistol maintenance video and we'll cover how to choose your first pistol in a future video. So we've settled on getting an AEG as your first gun. Awesome. But there's still a lot of models and variants to pick from, so we haven't really narrowed it down. Let's get to the questions. First and foremost, the question you should be asking yourself is where do you plan to use your gun? There's three options, indoor, outdoor, and plinking. The most important consideration is velocity limits. If your gun exceeds the field's limit, you won't be able to use your gun regardless of anything else. Measured using 0.2 gram BBs, you can't just put in a heavier weight ammo for a lower reading. Indoor fields generally have a lower limit, 350 to 380 FPS is pretty common. Outdoors is a little bit higher, generally 400 to 450 FPS, and of course if you're just plinking, that doesn't really apply. Make sure you check your local fields so you know ahead of time. Most AEGs that come into Canada will shoot around 400 FPS out of the box. Changing velocity is as simple as swapping out to a weaker spring, but unfortunately actually getting to the spring is the hard part and generally requires taking apart the gun entirely. We offer a spring downgrade service for nearly any AEG on the market, but the best option is to have a so-called quick change spring so you can do it yourself. Now be careful because not all quick change springs are created equal. Most guns have a so-called pseudo quick change spring, which generally means you still have to take out the mech box to change your spring, but you don't actually have to split open the mech box. Crytac, VFC, and most guns labeled as quick change springs will be like this. There's nothing wrong with this system, but as a first gun, you generally want to avoid opening your receiver at all, not to mention it'll void your warranty. That leads into what we call a true quick change spring, which generally can be done in under a few minutes with the mech box still inside the gun. The best part is you can swap springs on the fly depending on what field you're playing at. Not too many guns have this feature, but some examples are the Lancer G2, the Modify XTC, the CZ Bren, most models of P90s, and all the ENCs that we carry, with the exception of the ENC 104. If the gun you have your eye on doesn't have this feature, I'd recommend bringing it to a tech at least the first time around. Factor in about 50 bucks for parts and labor. The next question is what platform should you go for? Consider the type of magazines. How easily is it to find magazines on the market and how easily can you find a way to store magazines in your loadout? If you think there's already enough M4s on the market, well, I'd agree, but that also means M4 magazines are a dime a dozen, not to mention they're generally compatible brand to brand. If you go with something a bit more rare, like a UMP, finding magazines might not just be difficult, but expensive as well. Not to mention, weirdly shaped magazines are harder to find mag pouches, which might force you to run your included high cap for your first few games. Not ideal. If you're playing along with some buddies, try to match magazines with them. This means even in a fight, if you're out of mags, they can always toss you one of theirs, so you're not out of the fight. Airsoft is one of those hobbies where going against the grain might actually be a bad call. Having a more common platform generally means parts availability, not to mention other players can help you fix and diagnose problems if they are to come up. Don't get me wrong, rare guns are awesome, but save that for your second gun when you already have a main gun to rely on. In general, you can't go wrong with a standard M4, AK, or MP5 platform. If you really gotta be different, try at least finding a gun that shares common magazines like a CZ Bren or an FN Scar. Now you want to consider the length and weight of your first gun. If you're going to be playing indoors, fields are generally smaller with tighter room-to-room -room gameplay that's better suited for a lighter and shorter gun. With short engagement distances, a longer rifle won't give you any advantage and will just end up smacking on door frames. It's really common to see ultra-short CQB weapons like an MP5K or the very popular G&G p 9 At outdoor fields, you typically have a bit more room to play with, so in general, a longer gun is okay. However, the truth is a well-tuned short rifle will still generally outshoot a longer rifle, so don't think you have to get a longer barrel. If you're going to be playing indoor and outdoor, I'd recommend getting a medium to short rifle. This ENC 103 is about the longest I'd consider running. 
Personally, I'd rather go with the shorter ENC 103 behind me, just as an example. Even for outdoors, it's always nicer to have a lighter, easier to maneuver rifle, especially if you're starting out. Also, as an option down the road, you can always swap out to a longer inner barrel and run it through a suppressor if you really do need that extra barrel. It's always easier to make a shorter gun longer than a longer gun shorter. As for plinking, that's the easiest. Just go with what looks good to you. You don't have to worry about maneuverability when you're just standing still hitting targets. The next thing you want to consider is your budget. Unless you have friends to lend you gear, you don't want to be spending it all on just your gun. Aim for about 50% of your budget. The rest should be invested in a good quality battery and charger, non-fogging eye protection, extra magazines, and gear. If you're on a tighter budget, we put together a 350 Canadian Lancer starter kit that has everything you need to get started. Check out that video for more info. If you can step up your budget a little, I can't say enough good things about the ENC lineup. They come with metal bodies which are strong and feel great, but try to get a feel for them first as they are a little heavier than polymer guns. There are certainly higher end guns out there, but as a first gun, along with that quick change spring, the ENCs make a great starting point, and there's over 30 models to pick from. If you're looking at an AK or MP5 platform, SEMAs are excellent value for the money, with some of them actually featuring steel bodies. Remember though that they don't have quick change springs. If you don't mind the cost and time for a spring change, of course there are many great options on the market. G&G is very well known for their excellent starter platforms, and of course if budget isn't an issue, LCT, VFC and Crytac are always great options. The final considerations you should have are the smaller details. Consider battery space. Try to find a gun that can take both LiPo and nickel batteries. That generally means a rear wired battery with side storage in the stock. Even if you plan to run a LiPo, that extra bit of storage could mean a higher capacity battery and versatility if your main battery goes dead. Another consideration is the type of rails. Some models have no rails up front, but almost all ARs will at least have a top rail for optics. If front attachments aren't important to you, a polymer handguard often means a lower cost, not to mention lightweight and comfortable in the hands. Standard Picatinny rails allow you to install many different attachments on the market, but the downside is heavier weight and they tend to be pretty uncomfortable to hold. M-Lock and Keymart are both popular alternatives that basically allow you to stick Picatinny rail where you need them while still being comfortable and lightweight. As a final note, try to do as much research as you can and try to drop by the store to actually feel out your first gun. If you're watching this video, it means you're on the right track. Airsoft does have a pretty steep learning curve and the more research you do now, the better your experience will be. I hope you found this video useful and I do apologize if you really wanted a sniper rifle or a gas gun as your first gun. Remember, that's still an option for your second gun. As always, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe if you found this video useful and we'll catch you on the next one.